Time now to turn to Mitch Firestein, author of Planet Ponzi, the book of the century. Uh, Mitch, welcome back to the Kaiser Report. Thanks for having me, Max. We talked about Tesco in the first half. They got some kind of accounting irregularities. Uh, have you seen the story? What's your thought? Well, yeah, I did see the story, but uh, it's only 250 million, so it's relatively small in a world where Enron accounting and gimmicks, gimmickry is, seems to be acceptable. I mean, nobody looks at earnings anymore anyway. The only thing that matters is how much money the Fed's going to print or the Bank of England or the ECB wins the next dole out. And, you know, if you're in that 1%, you stand to benefit from it. Right, so the earnings of a company is no longer based on the profits tied to stuff like selling items at a, uh, a, a price greater than the cost because all these companies, all the banks and most of these companies are selling things at a loss. Uh, they make it up by just borrowing more from the Fed. At zero percent interest rates. So right. what, the, what my book talks about is transparency and accountability, of which we have none. So basically, you know, a company can say, well, look, even though we're not making money, we can use a different valuation, our mark to fantasy or mark to model, and say, look, our, but our property values on, on the states, estates that we own have gone up massively. So we can book those profits now, even if those prices are going to collapse. I don't know what the specific, I saw the front page of the FT, the article, and I, I cursed through it pretty quickly. But it looks like yet another case where there'll be no one held accountable. Yeah, no one knows the specifics. It's just accounting glop that they, that they exactly. signed off by one of the big four accounting firms. They just send them a big pile of dog and they say, oh, this looks great. And then everyone says, that's fine. Let's give them a high valuation. Speaking of valuations, Alibaba, the, uh, you know, internet commerce site, and now has a uh, market capitalization greater than the country of Scotland. Um, so how did that happen? Jack Ma. Ma, Ma, Ma. I guess because, you know, Goldman took this public. You know, of course, Goldman was behind the IPO, and they raised the valuation up and rolled a little bit more out to get it up to 25 billion. You know, it's another case of the market going out there and closing their eyes and buying the highs. What could possibly go wrong, Max? I mean, the valuation and the assumptions are ridiculous, but we're in a world where valuations don't matter anymore as long as the Fed's got your back. This is the NASDAQ bubble 3.0 on steroids. It's going to make the collapse of 1999 slash 2000 when it dropped 90% look mild by comparison. And you know, you've had me on a bit, and I've been pretty bearish on stocks. I think I've got the lowest percent of stocks that I've ever held right now. And actually, I think that before the end of the year, we're going to see a substantial um, decline in the, in the stock market. Okay, so for the past couple of years, people have been calling for another 2008 stock crash. Uh, and you, you think the fourth quarter of this year, we'll see that this is it. This is the end. This is the last bit. Well, you know, I think that we've hit, we're about to hit a wall. And, I mean, Yellen's noise... I mean, Janet Yellen was a great academician. She never voted no against one policy move that Ben Bernanke foot put forth. You know, Larry Summers, who's like a bad penny that keeps reappearing everywhere in the background, said to um, Senator Warren of Massachusetts, look, we never talk badly in public about each other. If you have something to say, let's do it quietly. The same people are behind the scenes. So now, can you taper? I got on Twitter at Planet Ponzi a question about can you taper a Ponzi scheme? Of course you can't taper a Ponzi scheme. Now what will the exogenous event be that triggers interest rates to go higher? I don't believe as the Fed and the ECB and the Bank of England do that they can control interest rates. When an exogenous shock hits the system, interest rates will naturally go higher, which is going to cause and trigger the next credit event. Of course the exogenous shock is what people used to say before Nassim Talib's book, The Black Swan. Now they just call it a black swan. Exactly. Well, so maybe, he, maybe he, he, the you know, exogenous event used to be what the black swan used to be called, but he branded it as a black swan, and now he's considered to be an expert on this. Because I'm kind of an old timer, though, you know, because I go back I, He won't come on the show. Why? Because uh, I, I, I threatened to punch him in the nose. Oh, my. Yeah, I threatened <laughs> to beat him up. And then he, I said, come to London, I'll buy you drinks, you know, let's make it up, let's get on the let's show. Let's kiss and make up. Yeah, let's kiss and make up. But he's, he's hiding there under, under some swan's, you know, liar. Uh, now, you have a chart, U UK weekly average earnings which have collapsed under Mark Carney. Tell us about it. Right. If you see the UK weekly average earnings, you can look into the bottom right-hand quadrant. You see it tails off below zero to negative three. But the spin and the lack of transparency and accountability that the government and their statistics have, they'll come out and tell you how great things are. But if you consider what the percentage of part-time employment, I think it's 44% increase in part-time employment it's it's very much with and zero pay 
zero hour contracts. If you factor all that in and you look at what average earnings are, they've actually declined and earnings have declined over the last seven years. But real estate, shockingly enough, Max, across the UK has gone up since 1995, close to 270%, I think. In London, it's gone up a lot more. Okay, the so, average home in London went over 500,000 pounds. It's trading at 10 times the average household income in London. That sounds like it's uh, stretched. It's bubble trouble. I mean, there are bubbles everywhere you look. Janet Yellen doesn't see them. Mark Carney, who created some of the biggest bubbles in history in the Canadian property market, doesn't see them. And so I don't know what the next round of bailouts will be. Are they going to bail out the property developers who are also lending money that they shouldn't be lending? But let's talk about Goldman Sachs for a second. They're, they lent money from the Fed at 0% interest rates. Then they, they stoke a bubble in Alibaba, which goes for $230 billion on the IPO. But a lot of that money now is going to be cashed out and find its way into London property with a lot of other Chinese money. So isn't that kind of the cycle of how you get to these extended prices? It starts with... 0% interest rates, they stoke uh, fraudulent IPOs on Wall Street, then they cash out, and they buy real estate. So you're creating this highly leveraged bubble scenario, and then you're waiting for the exogenous event, the black swan, you know, uh, to, to pump, pump the bottle, uh, bubble, and then they'll say, we never saw it coming. Yeah, exactly, Max. But the, the, the three key takeaway items here are debt, credit, and leverage. So what we've done is to get ourselves out of the, the problem of the credit crisis is, is increase the debt and the leverage to levels that have never been seen before in history. Just because people say that there are cash buyers in the London property market in London doesn't mean that they're not borrowing against assets in China or assets in the United States or assets elsewhere. Now, as far as taking the money out of IPOs, yes, they can take the, pull some of that money out of the IPOs, but none of these guys are forced to have skin in the game. So there's no accountability for these guys if they make a mistake. Like if the Fed gets it wrong and they make a mistake, nothing happens to them. Like that whole debacle in Scotland is showing what do you mean debacle in Scotland? The referendum. where they well, were, well, Why was it a debacle? Well, I mean, if you see, it turned into a nightmare with them groveling and promising anything to get the no vote to move ahead, which eventually won by 10 points. But the politicians promised anything. Now, will they really deliver? I don't know. But what it showed is people are getting fed up with the same political lies. So this is going to have very limited shelf life. I mean, Spain will probably be next, which will signal the end of the euro. If you look at France, France is a gigantic problem for the euro. Nobody's talking about. Their 10-year bond is trading at 1.3%. That means that there's very little risk in that trade. Now, 65% of people in France want to recall Hollande. And the leader in the polls now is Marie Le Pen. And the first thing, or her platform, if she was elected in France tomorrow, would be to pull France out of the euro and probably repudiate the debt that they have in bonds and not pay it. So, I mean, France is a, a ticking time bomb. Spain is a ticking time bomb. But these bonds are still mispriced because Mario Draghi, at the head of the European Central Bank, who's also ex-Goldman, as it were, is going to come in on his white horse and take a fire hose filled with trillions of dollars that you, I, or nobody else in Europe has authorized them to give out to the banks so their bonuses can be higher and misprice assets even further. Not yeah. just property, though. Well, in, in, in the U.S., now, median family net worth has also collapsed. Uh, you have a chart. Yeah, we have a chart on, on the median net worth and how wealth inequality, when, when the president, President Obama, was elected, he said his policies of transparency and accountability would be greater than anywhere in history. Wealth inequality is at the highest point I think it's ever been. We've seen a 39% 39, um, 39 decrease with the latest Pew studies that came out, I think, for uh, cal the calendar year ending 2010. In, that's inflation-adjusted terms in terms of US, uh, U.S. dollars in terms of uh, 2011. So what's happening is the middle class is being squeezed. In a similar survey, 85% of the middle class feel they can't survive on, on the money that they're making now. So they're borrowing on credit card debt at 25 or 30%. Everybody's maxing out their debt. So I don't see a consumer-led recovery. There are two things that drive an economy, savings and capital expenditures. We have neither present in this. All we have are, is money printing by the Fed, reckless Keynesian policy that's allowing companies to purchase their shares back, 
and push them to unrealistic levels. And the talking heads in the media, the same media, it has to be an approved message by the administration. Otherwise, you know, you get into trouble in a gray area. But let's talk about, again, return to Scotland for a second, because mm -hmm. when you talk economics to the average Scottish person and you say they could do better, they immediately think that means they should get more handouts from the government. They, they, don't, they don't understand that if they were independent, they could create an economy and compete with England. Right. And they'd, all, and they'd have 90% of the oil wealth, and they'd have the highest GDP per capita in, in the world. But, but they don't get the, the, in other words, in Europe especially, people equate in, income with the civil servants, with getting money from the government. And they don't understand that there's this thing called entrepreneurialism and, and savings and capital appreciation and wealth that you can do for yourself. You don't need the government. You, you can actually go ahead and you know be pro be prosperous. Yeah, that's exactly the point, Max. If they took all the oil and the revenues from that oil, Scotland would have probably the most robust economy in the world. But the government and the No campaign had infinite deep pockets with UK taxpayer money to come up with any kind of campaign that they wanted to fearmonger and actually scare people. That's why at the but last. But even minute, so, even even the fearmongering, the fact is the average mindset of the average European is that they equate income with government handouts Correct. or government bureaucracy jobs. They don't understand that Scotland, if it were separated from England, both England and Scotland would both benefit because they'd both be competing. Scotland would have a huge asset, the oil, and uh, they, they would uh, be incredibly prosperous going forward. But they don't, they don't understand that to be economically independent is the same thing as being uh, free. They, th they think that they're, they, they're born in, into this kind of bureaucratic slavery and they just want more crumbs. Right, because they're afraid from being cut off. So the next day after they failed the referendum, there were bags of food in George <laughs> Square. Like, we're so compassionate. We're mm. going to give these people that could have had a, a 20,000 euro check cut to them the next day. We'll let them we're have cake. We're going to have them cake. Give mm. them cake. Give them a bag of food. And they're like, oh, they're so compassionate. No, they're freaking stupid. That's right. All right, let me just, we've got 20 seconds here. French farmers set the tax office on fire in protest at collapsing prices on their production due to Russian sanctions. So this was a bit of a blowback. Yeah, we got 30 yeah, seconds. This is the Five Eyes program. You know, as, as United States, Canada, UK, Australia, and New Zealand all ganging up to come up with a coordinated policy, which I think has to do with UL, US, the U.S. dollar dominance and the end of the U.S. dollar dominance. So I think that's where the well, the you're saying those are sanctions and uh, well, I think, but, I think, but the I, dollars, I think you, you know, dollars rallying, gold and silver right. at a four-year low, dollars at a four-year high. You, you've been saying it, it the opposite be, would be true. When's it, it going to break this quarter? Soon, no, it's going to within the next couple of years. You're going to see the dollar break as a reserve currency, and Russia and China will be the people that actually um, cause that to happen. Thanks, Mitch, for being on the Kaiser Report. Thanks for having me here.